Greetings the internet, this is Ninark, and welcome back to a new tutorial. Now, I haven't been around for a while, but that's because I've been working on my new game, Frog 1, that was just released on Steam a couple weeks ago, so uh, check it out if you're cool, and if you're not cool, you should probably check it out anyway, it'll probably make you a little bit cooler. Uh, but today, I'm going to kind of do a one-off uh, about better four-directional movement in uh, like a 2D top-down Zelda original style. Um, now you can easily make a 4D uh, movement with one of the behaviors and we're going to be using that in conjunction with some code to make it a little bit better. Uh, and we'll get into why that's better and what exactly that means in a second. But uh, yeah, so let's get started right away. Now I'm not gonna do any uh, like organization or anything in particular, it's just gonna show you the very basics of making a top-down four dimensional the the words four directional movement a little bit better. Uh, so yeah, so let's just rename this project real quick. Better four D, and uh, I'll start right away. So let me just show you real quick. If we make a sprite, put it in there. Let's make him sixteen by sixteen, and just make sure this sets the bounding box so it doesn't get anything weird. Fill it with the color. We're not going to worry about sprites at all today. We're just going to get the movement done. So uh, what you can do is just go to behaviors over here, make a new behavior, go down to eight directional movement. I know this is confusing because eight is twice as much as four, but uh, you'll see what happens in a second. So uh, let's just change the speed to 100, 128 to be computery acceleration to 10,000. And deceleration to that the wow okay I can't say any words today deceleration to ten thousand that just means it'll immediately stop and go I mean there's math in there somewhere but whatever directions we just want four directions um, we don't want to set the angle I mean unless you want to I guess um, and let's leave the default controls on so I can show you real quick now you can't see my fingers on the keyboard but watch so I press left and he goes to the left let go. Right, he goes right. Now if I go right and then I, I'm holding down right and press up, he moves up. And same thing with left and right, he moves down and up. But if you're moving down and you press the, either of the side keys, it doesn't move to either side. Um, so it kind of feels a little clunky and you're not really sure what's going on and why you're even playing this game since it's so bad. So we're gonna fix that. And uh, yeah, so let's close out of this. Let's click our little dude and turn off default controls. And that just means it doesn't automatically uh, assign your keyboard keys to your sprite. Uh, one thing we got to do also is insert a new object and put in a keyboard. Now you can do this with a gamepad um, or a WSD, but I'm just going to be using the directional keys. So we got the keyboard, we got the sprite. Um, and then the only thing we need to do now is add an instance variable to our sprite and we'll just call it dir for direction and that's all we need for this particular demonstration all right so i'm going to create a group and this is just like I, I mean i don't know do as i say not as i do anyway movement i just like groups because they're fun and press s for a sub event and we're going to go to keyboard on key pressed and click to choose and we're going to choose the right arrow first and we're going to go clockwise from there so copy paste 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 and let's make this the down arrow this is going to be the left arrow and this will be the up arrow all right so what we want to do for this is we're going to add uh, some actions obviously there we go and what we want to do is go to our sprite and then set our value of our direction to zero. And I know that's what it starts as, but just so you know, zero is uh, moving to the right in Construct 2 uh, in like a regular 360 degree movement. So zero will be right. And then moving clockwise, if you took geometry in high school, hopefully you did. So we're going to do 90 for down, copy and paste over here. We're going to change this one to 180, which is to the left, and 270 for up, and then it will loop back around to 1. Uh, so 
what this is doing, and I'm going to explain all of this as we go along. So basically we're just saying the right hour is pressed, make sure the direction it knows that it's going to the right, down, left, up, right. But that doesn't solve all our problems. Uh, so what we're going to have to do is make another sub-event on our movement. Now not a sub-event to our keyboard or any of these things, to our movement. Uh, and we're going to go to on key released. Now we're gonna, this gets a little tedious. We'll make right released and then what we want to do is make this one an or block so you right click over here to the left not here it won't show anything a little on this little bar with error i wish this was more apparent this needs to change anyway uh make or block and then copy and paste this four times right arrow down arrow just like we were doing before left arrow moving clockwise and then up finally all right so this is seeing uh, if any of our keys are released, obviously, because that's literally what it says. Uh, now, we want to make a sub-event to this. So what we want to happen is if a key is released, it needs to look for the last or the other keys that are being pressed down. Now, uh, this doesn't exactly work if you're holding down three keys, but if you're holding down three keys, I don't know what you're doing. So uh, this will work for as long as you're holding down only one other key as soon as you release. Uh, so let's make a sub-event to this event, and we want to make a uh, check for key is down. So we'll do uh, right, just like we were doing before, and now, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Copy, paste four times, but we also want to add else statements here, and you'll see why in a second. So we're going to add a, another condition, system, and down to special conditions to else. Now make sure it's above your keyboard thing or else it'll give you that little error. Put it above. And then we actually want one more of these, but it just the else. Um, and that is because if there is nothing being hold down, he should stop. Uh, so, and that's what we want. So uh, we want to do the same thing over here. We want to set the direction, oops, set the direction here and here and here and here to the same. I know this is a little bit tedious, but it, it's worth it, I, I think. I mean, to me, it's worth it. 180, 270, and then finally, we want to, under this else, we want it to be negative 1, just so it doesn't uh, hit anything in particular. Um, yeah. Okay, so, and then the very, that's pretty much everything. So basically, let's see. If you're holding down the right arrow, it's going to the right. Uh, if you release it, it looks for whatever key is still down and will set the direction to that. And if no key is held down, then it will send a direction of negative one, which will be null and it, it will, uh, you will, you'll see. Let's add another sub event to the whole movement thing. Make sure it's not sub event of any one of these events and go to our sprite and then go to compare instance variable direction. Now, if the direction is zero, then he's going to the right. So this is where we're kind of going to do a little bit of a hybrid of using the construct to in uh, engine physics so that we don't have to deal with collisions and it'll deal with that ourselves. So if it's going to the right, we want to go to our sprite and then we want to go to simulate control and control to the right. Uh, and you'll see why I'm not just adding plus one uh, because you know, we'll get there. Sorry, I'm a little sleep deprived. Maybe I'm not as professional as I've been because I haven't had a chance to do one of these tutorials in quite a while. So anyway, let's get back to the action. So let's copy this a couple times and do the same thing. 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees. And we want to do, oops, I don't need to change that. But this needs to be down. This needs to be left. And this needs to be up. All right. And just make sure you're doing right down, left up, so that it stays consistent and you don't mess anything up. It's important. And then our very last one, we're going to do sprite is equal to negative one. And that's if nothing is being held down. And we're just going to cut out anything. So. Uh, it will default to doing nothing, um, which is what we want.
And that's basically it. So if we go to our layout, and I know you can't see this happening, but oh, that's a problem. Okay, so make sure you set your direction initially to negative one. That way, when you start your project, he's not immediately going to the right. He's just staying still. So right, if I press left and press up, he goes up. I let go of up, and I did something wrong. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> I figured it out. It's that I'm an idiot. All right, this is our problem here. Uh, if you were smart, you wouldn't have made that mistake. So that was actually a test for all of you out there. If you figured out that you needed to do that, I will send Leafy to your doorstep to deliver a brand new nuclear missile right to your front steps. This is not a scam. Anyway, all right. So now everything should work properly, and it does. So you can't see me, but I'm holding right, hold up, let go. It's still going to the right, and etc. etc. Et not etc. That's incorrect. And so uh, the reason why we actually use the um, behavior instead of just adding is because now we can add a new object, make it a sprite. Let's make the size like 64 by 64. It doesn't really matter. Change the color to green. Make sure this bounding box is right. And then put it places. And then if we make add the solid behavior to this, and then just kind of copy it around by holding control, you'll see that he hits these walls. So that way we don't have to actually uh, implement any collision to our code. Instead of doing it by hand, we can just let Construct do it. Now, there is a bit of like a collision issue where sometimes if the speed is wrong, it will not go all the way up to the square, but that's not a super big problem for a game like this, um, at least not in my opinion. If you want to, I don't know, figure something out, then go ahead, but this is just a simple, easy fix for making your 4D movement a lot better. Anyway, I hope that wasn't too rambly, but um, yeah, so that's just this. I'm going to be doing a couple more one-offs like this, uh, not at exactly like follow these directions to make a whole game, but just little things you can input into your uh, project that you already have or that you might be starting to work on uh, without having to like go through an entire series of things to get just what you want. Anyway, that is my rambling, but I hope you learned a lot, and uh if you did, then please like my video and send me $1 million. And if you didn't like it, then I don't care because I don't like you anyway. Anyway, all right. I think I've said goodbye like 10 times now, so goodbye.